this is a belt grinder. Well, at least so far my attempt at a belt grinder. Over the weekend, I fabric cobbled this thing together and uh, the reason I did that is because I'm in need of a belt grinder. Now you guys might be asking, well, why? I mean, you've got angle grinders and that type of thing. You know, I'm sure you guys have uh, have realized this before, but these little angle grinders, um, even the little ones, are pretty noisy, actually. <laughs> and, um, you know, your neighbors don't uh, get very friendly when you're using these things for hours on end. So, belt grinders are generally a little bit quieter when they're running, and uh, that's why, basically, I'm going to be building one. Also, um, <laughs> I was given a free motor by my dad, so thanks dad. Uh, old pool pump motor, probably about 20 years old, maybe even older, threw in a new set of bearings and it's running you know, just, just fine. Uh, went down to the shop, bought a drive wheel, we'll talk a little bit about that later, and uh, you know, just put this whole lot together. And man, does this thing grind like a mother That's what we're going to be building today. Welcome back to the Burden Builds Garage. Let's get started. I'm going to drop a little pearl of wisdom on you guys. And some of you may know this already, some of you may not. Each belt grinder, no matter how big it is, how small, whatever you're going to use it for, needs a belt. And the belt that I chose today is a 50 millimeter wide belt by 1.3 meters long. Now, if you work in inches, that's about two inches by 50 inches. Although I think a lot of you guys might be more familiar with the two by 72 inch belts. I chose this belt for a very specific reason mostly because it's the only one the shop had, so I bought it, and um, that's what I've got to work with today. When it comes to motors, uh, this motor that I was given Again, I was given it, I didn't choose it. Um, it happens to be one horsepower. Now, uh, the general thing with belt grinders is that there's two very important items, is horsepower and we'll talk about the other one shortly. Um, when it comes to horsepower, we want about one horsepower per one inch of belt. Now, of course, this is a one horsepower with a two inch belt. So you may be saying, well, but it's not powerful enough. I can tell you, uh, as far as my testing has gone, this is powerful enough for most people. And uh, I mean, especially if you're not trying to use the whole 50 millimeters or two inches of the belt at once over this much section of metal, it's gonna be perfectly fine. It takes off metal at a great rate. The second important factor about belt grinders is speed. Now I'm not talking about motor speed, I'm talking about the belt speed. That's our surface feet per minute. And generally the higher the better. It's not gonna help if we've got a five horsepower motor and it's only able to give you a thousand feet per minute surface speed uh, of our belt. That's not even good enough to grind your fingernails. 
it probably is, so don't go sticking your fingernails into that. Uh, but you kind of get what I'm what I'm saying here. Uh, we want three, four, five, even six thousand surface feet per minute, and that's going to give us a really good uh, material and a, a fast material removal rate. Um, of course, now to do that, you need horsepower, which is why we said those two important factors is horsepower and surface speed. As there is always no substitute for cubic inches, there's no substitute for horsepower. Twenty-seven, so about five millimeters to go. <laughs> Almost there. Keep this in mind. If you're running a belt at six thousand feet a minute, make sure that your belt is actually rated to run at that speed. I mean, it's no good buying a belt that is two thousand or rated to run at two thousand feet a minute, and you're running it at six, seven, eight thousand feet a minute. This thing is going to slap you in the face. Now, I'm pretty sure that this one is rated for six thousand feet a minute, and I mean, it hasn't slapped me in the face yet, so that's pretty much all that makes me think that. But it must be good. It's uh, it's made in Germany. Another thing to remember with these belt grinders is if you don't want the belt to jump off, <laughs> we're going to need a way of tracking this belt. Otherwise, shoop, and it's off. Um, and the way we do that is by using a, uh, I suppose, a roller. And um, these rollers aren't flat. Well, at least one of them is. The tracking roller is not flat. Um, it's got a crown to it. Now, I'm not talking about the old pointy crown thing on the sides. This roller looks like that. It's not flat. It's got kind of a curve to it, so it's crowned. So the belt always wants to track in the middle of this roller, and then we just adjust it uh, up and down, and it'll track the belt. So to get these 6,000 feet a minute uh, surface speed, we've got to choose the correct motor. Now, like I said, I got this motor for free, so I didn't have much of a choice. I'm not moaning about that. Uh, but I had to choose the appropriate sized drive wheel. Now, most motors that you're going to get, that relatively cheap ones, are going to be a single phase motor, and their speed is uh, dictated relative to the frequency. So where we are, 230 volts, 50 hertz, and for a two-pole motor, this is a two-pole motor, it's going to give us about 2,850 RPM, 3,000 RPM thereabouts. If it was a four-pole motor, the, the kind of things that you get on drill presses, um, those are going to turn into like 1,440 RPM thereabouts. Um, so as I said, yeah, two-pole motor, call it 3,000 RPM. So I had to choose the correct size wheel uh, to give me that surface speed. This is like a somewhere around a 200 millimeter wheel, I don't know, like eight inches, somewhere around there. Uh, so just went down to the local wheel shop, bought one of those and, um, and fitted it. Now, if you guys want a variable speed motor um, or, or belt grinder, belt sander, whatever you want to call it, um, it's not as simple as just varying the voltage. It's the frequency that, uh, that drives or that controls the speed of the motor. Now, technically, yeah, I suppose you could slow the motor down by lowering the voltage, but it's not good practice. Um, so don't do that. If you want, better if you can get a three-phase motor. Now, don't worry if you don't have three-phase at home. You get these things called VFDs, a variable frequency drive. Uh, it takes a, a single phase input, it turns it into three phase and feeds it into your motor. And that thing varies the frequency so that you've got speed control. I don't know, maybe depending on the, on the VFD you're using, maybe from zero or just off zero RPM to, 
I don't know, whatever, two, three, four thousand RPM on the motor. I'm not too familiar with these things. I just know that you get them and they're not that expensive. So if you can, maybe go for that. Uh, especially if you're using maybe like a two or three horsepower motor and you're going to all the trouble of making this thing, um, you know, try and use the right stuff. But as we're going to, to as we're going to do today, <laughs> we're building it out of free and scrap stuff that's just lying around the workshop. Chaps, don't be an idiot. I can't tell you over the years how many fingers I've lost. I mean, I've only got like 10 left. Don't do shit like this, clamping your platen or plate uh, onto your belt grinder. I just did this for testing purposes to use it for five minutes to see if this setup motor wheel belt was gonna be strong enough. If this thing hooks up, shit's gonna go wrong really, really fast. You're gonna lose eyes, ears, even maybe some toes. I mean, you probably get told that you don't use your ears anyway, but still better have them on the side of your head than, um, than not. So uh, when you are doing stuff like this, just put that little bit of extra effort into bolting everything nice and tight with, with big enough hardware. <laughs> yeah, I don't really feel like losing any more, any more fingers. So the loose plan here is to remove all of this wood and this nasty looking bracket here. We're gonna replace this with some steel. And uh, for, for this initial setup, we're gonna use two wheels, one drive wheel and one idler wheel that's gonna create tension and it's gonna do the tracking. Now, before you guys jump up in the comments, I don't know if this is exactly gonna work or if it's the best way of doing it. Um, so leave me some nice comments uh, if you, if you know any different, uh, it's always nice to hear from you guys. But this is what we're gonna try for now. And the way we're gonna create tension is we're gonna take a tube within a tube. So maybe my hand can be one tube and then this is the smaller tube and it's gonna ride in and out. And the way we're gonna create that tension is using uh, this little gas lift thing. I got this from a local hardware shop. Uh, it's quite, got quite a nice spring tension on it. And uh, I mean, that was like 30, 30 bucks, is somewhere around two, three dollars um, for your American folk. And uh, that's what we're gonna use basically. And then we'll have to come up with some sort of arrangement at the top here. Something similar to this where uh, one side of the shaft can be tracked up or down using some type of adjustment, like a threaded adjustment, and that'll track the wheel. If this doesn't work, then what we'll do is we'll get a third drive wheel. And uh, we might just lower this wheel to create a little bit more space on the belt. And we'll use this third wheel as a track tracking wheel and a tensioner. Of course, this is not a wheel. We'll go get another wheel. We're not gonna try and use a paint can lid. I mean, you know, this will never work. Just before we get into those beauty shots, a B-roll sequence, if you will, please like, subscribe, comment to the videos, tell us about your belt grinder, or if you don't have one, tell us about the one that you wanna build. I am super, super stoked with the way this thing came out. I can't wait to use it. Okay, let's light it up. Check your eggs next time. <laughs> 